Hi, I'm Marjan Sirjani, a professor in software engineering at Mallard Allen University, and I'm going to report on the two uh, workshops that we had at MDU on cybersecurity. Uh, we had the first workshop on April 27th and the second one on September 7th. The goals of the workshop uh, were to have a venue to promote cybersecurity at Software Center, also present MDU as a hub for research on cybersecurity, and encourage the industries at uh, Software Center to collaborate with us at Mallard Allen University on this subject. Uh, I also presented cybersecurity projects at MDU and other people uh, also presented some of the projects. I will listen to industry representatives to know their challenges related to cybersecurity. We also had internationally recognized experts in the field giving talks. Of course, we also wanted to promote our own project at Software Center. In the uh, first workshop on April 27th, we have 10 talks. 158 participants. On this, in the second workshop on uh, September 7, we had eight talks and a panel and 103 participants. Some of the companies uh, came back, so the, the highlighted ones are those that were uh, in the first and second workshop both. My observations at the workshop were that many people enjoyed the workshop and came back for the second one. Many companies attended both workshops. And the small comment is that early September is not a good timing for companies. I had enthusiastic speakers, but at the end, they couldn't make it for the first week of September because it was just the end of the holidays and they had many meetings in the companies themselves. Another observation is that industry and academia mostly are not yet using the same terminology. They mostly speak different languages and we need to uh, get used to that or, or, or try to figure out how to, to solve this. Industries presented high-level abstract goals and challenges and we had one talk on more application-level challenges. And I think standardization and dependability community seem to be one of the best interfaces still between uh, universities and companies. Some people didn't like some of the academic talks, of course. They thought they are too complicated and far from the subject. Some didn't like uh, the industry talks. Uh, because they thought that those are too abstract, too high level, and uh, not enough technical for their tests. Uh, but in general, from the feedbacks we received, I think we had uh, happy participants. I collect some of the technical messages that I received through the workshop. Uh, one was from Marsha Chechik in the panel that she said after 20 years of struggling with the problem of how to make software engineers write high quality software, it seems that it passes through the boring way that safety critical community went through, meaning standardization and processes. Of course, some of us in software engineering uh, community like to focus on the product and not the process. And that's why uh, what uh, Marsha is uh, pointing at. Another message is that both faults and attacks can be seen as anomalies and be discovered using similar techniques, of course not all of them, uh, providing resilience against stealthy and coordinated attacks um, needs new techniques. The third message is that we need to record the failures and attacks and their sources and share them with others, like what we have in avionics. That's the only way uh, to success. I will go through the presentations and summary of a few of them here, and then you can uh, uh, find the, the full videos of the talks and uh, Software Center homepage. We talked. We had talked about digitalization. Jan Bosch talked about digitalizations. We had talked 
talks from uh, companies like Grundfos and BCE. We had talks on languages, access control, and smart contracts. We had five talks on automotive cybersecurity, uh, four talks on cyber physical systems, safety and anomal safety and anomaly detection, and uh, Marsha's talk on software engineering, dependability, and formal methods, the breach. Jan Bosch uh, talked about digitalizations and he said that uh, the traditional approach is to freeze functionality and don't connect the device. This is no longer sufficient. We need to periodically update functionality and for that system need to be connected. Of course, these systems are connected all the time for different reasons. And so uh, cybersecurity is now critical for embedded systems and uh, the solutions should support and not block the use of DevOps. So we cannot just stop the system. Uh, we need to uh, keep it going, even if there is an attack. We need to find a way for keep the system secure. So they say that cybersecurity is about detecting, protecting, and defending the system. And we have to go one step further for cyber resiliency, which is reacting, adapting, and recovering. This is not from Jan Bosch, of course. Uh, I talked about uh, cybersecurity, safety, and resilience, and a computer system's ability to continuously deliver the intended outcome despite adverse cyber events. That's what we call resiliency. We need to have resiliency against the advanced persistent threat, where an adversary has significant levels of expertise and resources, and using multiple and coordinated attacks. So we need security to be built in as a fun foundational part of the architecture and design. Uh, we cannot test in cyber resilience. Like other qualities in software, we need a requirement engineering, design models, architecture, and analysis techniques to make it possible. Uh, Sheila and Yarmo from Volvo CE talked about uh, cybersecurity challenges in construction ma machinery. Uh, Pierre from Rice, Pierre Kleberger from Rice, he talked about the interplay between safety and cybersecurity in vehicle development and the distinctions between safety and security. Uh, the way he mentioned it is that uh, one is that security is uh, concerned with the risk originated from the environment and potentially impacting the system and safety is, it, uh, is the other way around. It deals with the risk arising from the system and potentially impacting the environment. Another dimension for distinction is that security typically addresses malicious risks and safety addresses purely accidental risks. Pierre mentioned that uh, in places, safety mechanisms may introduce security vulnerabilities. Uh, one example is on a CAN network. When we have uh, too many transmission er errors, uh, we will disconnect a CAN node because we think that's erroneous. Receiving CAN nodes informs the transmitting CAN node about faulty CAN frames, and uh, that's uh, when the uh, the descending can will disconnect itself. So this safety mechanism introduces a security vulnerable vulnerability, which can be uh, utilized by an attacker, because the attacker may continuously inform a transmitting can node that is transmitting erroneous can frame while, while this is not true. And this way, the nodes uh, are uh, disconnected one by one. Uh, Stefano Zanero talked about automotive security. Uh, they have an approach to analyze the risk related to topology of a network and automatically propose better secure by design network topologies. We have also in our work uh, similar approaches and techniques using formal methods. So they, our approaches can be complement of each other. Uh, what they do is to represent attacks as structured attack trees, map the attacks on the topology of the network, evaluate the risks derived by the network, and propose better design topologies. 
uh, one problem that Stefano mentions is again can. Can is vulnerably, vulnerable by design uh, as anyone can broadcast on the network any, any message. So ECUs just collect any message with the ID they are interested in. This is how attackers can feed ECUs false information with ease. Edward Lee from UC Berkeley ta talked about consistency and availability and the trade-off between them. Uh, consistency is agreement on the values of shared variables and the state of the world. And availability is ability to respond to reads and writes accessing th those uh, state variables. He connected this subject to our subject in our workshop with an example the Denso Autonomous Braking Demonstrating Advanced Driver Assistance System in uh, 2018. Um, he showed a software architecture where we have a camera uh, feeding data to the braking assistant and we have the brake receiving data from braking assistant and the brake pedal. Uh, and in this example, uh, we need to answer this question. Should the brake component wait for the analysis of the braking assistant before responding to brake pedal or not? So if we, said, if we say yes, we are emphasizing consistency. And if we say no, we are emphasizing availability. And these are the questions that we need to uh, answer both in safety and security communities when we have distributed systems. Stefan Mark Steiner, from AVL talked about automotive cybersecurity verification. He is now uh, our PhD student at MDU and uh, working on uh, automotive cybersecurity testing. Uh, what is he doing in his PhD thesis is that, is that uh, he is using a model-based approach for testing. First, he built a behavioral model of the system. He's working on automata learning for that. Then he uses model checking to find the vulnerabilities and use the, the results for generating test cases. Kim uh, Hilgard from Grundfos talk about the challenges uh, and reflections on supply chain attack risk mitigation. Miroslav talked about uh, language models and if uh, they can help to design more cybersecurity, cybersecurity software. So uh, what he did was very interesting. He uses the code examples in CVE, take code examples from that as is, identify the core concepts, extract a minimum viable code snippet, and he introduced a, a nice technique for that, then create generic code example, generalize the example for reuse, and finally create product specific examples uh, to inject product and inject product code to the example uh, to and use that for training the model. So using these examples, uh, he could uh, train uh, and uh, use AI to find out what are the codes that can be malicious. Marsha from University of Toronto uh, gave a talk on a software engineer's take on safety, assurance, and reliability. Marsha's background is on formal methods, so she is uh, working on formalizing arguments enabling creation of rigorous assurance cases based on provably deductive uh, strategies. So one example is that uh, the claim is vehicle V never overheats when operating at speeds less than 120 km per hour, per hour and the system is vehicle V, the property is the system does not overheat. The execution set is all instances of vehicle V's operation where its speed never exceeds 120 km per hour. Marsha is also working on assuring reliability of machine learning components and her focus is on change. Uh, you can listen to her uh, talk if you want to know more. We also had a panel 
uh, consisting of Marshall from University of Toronto, Stefano from Politecnico Milano, and uh, Pierre from Rice, and myself. So the questions were in what aspects false anomalies and attacks and the methods to handle them are similar or different. How can we move from requirements to models and to ver formal verification? And how cybersecurity challenges and methods are different within automotive and robotic domain, domain typically different? So for the first uh, question, this is what uh, actually Pierre replied in his uh, talk, and I told you the two dimensions for distinction. And uh, what uh, we got from Stefano's work is that in some cases, we really don't care if an anomaly is a fault or an attack. We just shut down the system, for example. In some cases, we need to know we need additional research for that. And there are differences in detection when we have attackers trying to hide the attacks and also stealthy and coordinated attacks. The second question, how can we move from requirements to models and to formal verification? As Marshall mentioned, it's the million dollar question. So it's very much domain specific. If we can model at the correct level of abstraction with right terminology, then we can also reason about uh, the model and the system. We need software engineers and computer scientists to build software systems, but we need those who have also domain knowledge. And of course, if you don't know what's the requirement, we cannot write a property, we cannot model, and we cannot verify. So um, the, Marsha concluded that we need this boring culture of safety critical systems, which is using standards and focusing on processes. And of course, redundancy helps, like in fault tolerance community. The third question, you can listen to the panel discussion on YouTube if you want to know the answer. Uh, I talked about projects on cybersecurity at MDU. Uh, one of those projects is our project number 29, the Software Center project, uh, modeling and analyzing cyber physical systems, started in 2016 and ended this sprint. We worked on both uh, timing analysis and cybersecurity. So these were the two different directions that we had. In the cybersecurity part, we built the framework, the crystal framework. We started from identification of threats using Stride developer runtime monitor to check the system behavior at runtime using a tiny digital twin. Extend to provide mitigation plans, extend, we, we, we are still doing that to have resiliency. And we are also working on learning the digital twin as an automata. The architecture is based on the MAPE-K architecture and the feedback loop in control systems. The highlights are, are of the work are that we have a combination of formal and model-based methods, design time and runtime cycles, which uh, you may call it DevOps, and we also uh, uh, focused on time constraints. There are other uh, projects like Serendipity. It's a big SSF uh, project, secure and dependable platforms for autonomy. We, uh, the work is based on the hypothesis that security and safety can be addressed in a uniform manner based on um, the features that we have. Dependability is about surviving unintentional faults. Security is surviving intentional faults. But um, we can address them in a unified manner. Um, SACSIS is a big KKS synergy project led by myself, and it's about safe and secure adaptive collaborative uh, systems. Uh, the companies are the three Volvos and APB Robotics. Uh, we had subproject one, which is an actor based platform for adaptive collaborative systems. Sub, uh, project two, continuous and adaptive safety and security assurance, and sub-project three, real-time cloud and fog computing. 
Uh, we also have other projects like Berry DevOps, which is a Horizon 2020 project. Um, an insect, intelligent, secure, trustable things. We also have a Reliant PhD school, uh, Reliable, Safe and Secure, Intelligent, Autonomous Systems, which we submitted the proposal. We passed the first phase, but we are still looking for industrial partners. So please feel free to contact me or Christina for that. So this is what I wanted to tell you. Um, I'm here if you have any questions and hope you enjoy the rest of the workshop.